The Magic Treehouse Fact Checker, Dolphins and Sharks, a nonfiction companion to Magic Treehouse number nine, Dolphins at Daybreak, by Mary Pope Osborne and Natalie Pope Boyce. Dear readers, when we got back from our journey in Dolphins and Daybreak, we really wanted to learn more about dolphins and sharks, so we decided to be fact trackers. Our fact tracking was like diving under the sea and we never got wet. We began in the library. We checked out books and DVDs. Then we looked at many websites. We learned about the different forms of life under the sea. We discovered that coral reefs are like the rainforests of the ocean world. We found amazing information about the way that dolphins live together and the way that sharks hunt for food. Finally, we learned about life in the ocean is fragile and needs our protection. So get your backpacks and your diving suits and let's head for the ocean. Jack and Annie. Chapter 1. Oceans The ocean is a vast and wonderful place. It covers more of the world than land, almost twice as much. In fact, oceans cover 140 million square miles of the Earth's surface. Oceans can be more than six miles deep. Underneath the water there are great mountains, deep valleys, beautiful coral reefs, and even volcanoes. The Earth has four oceans, the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian, and the Arctic. The ocean is home to dolphins, sharks, and millions of other sea creatures, but life in the ocean is very different from life on land. What is life in the ocean like? What kind of world is it? Salty water. Ocean water is very salty. If all the salt in the oceans were spread out over the, all the land and the earth, the salt would be five feet deep. The salt comes from rocks and soil. Rain and rivers wash it from the land into the ocean. Once there, it mixes with ocean water. Most sea creatures need salt water to stay alive. Layers. Sea creatures live in different depths of water. Scientists call these depths layers or zones. There are three layers. The top one is called the sunlit zone. The middle one is called the twilight zone. And the bottom one is called the midnight zone. Most sea creatures we know about live in the first or sunlit layer. This layer goes down about 600 feet from the surface. Sunlight shines into this layer warming the water. Light from the sun helps tiny sea plants and animals called plankton grow in the sunlit layer. Many sea creatures use plankton for food. Most dolphins and sharks live here. There are also whales, turtles, squid, jellyfish, and thousands of other marine animals swimming in the sunlit zone. The second layer is the twilight layer. Not much twilight reaches here. This layer goes down about 3,000 feet. Plants cannot grow. Although some sharks can live at this level, dolphins cannot. The animals here have adapted to little light. Some have big eyes on to help them see. Others make their own lights with special organs in their bodies called uh, photophores. The spotted ratfish has large eyes to help it see in the twilight layer. The third layer is the midnight layer and reaches to the very bottom of the ocean. It goes down to over 20,000 feet. It is very dark and cold there. Not a ray of light can shine through. The temperature is almost freezing. Odd and amazing fish live in the midnight layer. Food chain. In the ocean, larger and stronger animals eat smaller and weaker ones. Scientists call this process the food chain. Animals at the top of the food chain are called predators. Predators are animals that hunt and catch smaller and weaker animals for food. The animals they eat are their prey. Dolphins and sharks are predators. Because they are larger and stronger than most sea animals, they are at the top of the food chain. The smallest and weakest animals near the bottom of the food chain are called scavengers. They eat leftover bits of plants and animals that are in the water. Scavengers help keep the water clean. In fact, they are like the vacuum cleaners of the sea. Coral reefs. Many animals find their food near coral reefs. Coral reefs form near the shore in the sunny, warm parts of the ocean. They are made up of the skeletons of small sea creatures called coral. After many years, the coral forms tall underwater mountains. Because reefs are the habitat for so many other marine animals, scientists call coral reefs the rainforests of the ocean. A coral reef can look as if it has cliffs, forests, and caves. Some are white, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, and purple. The fish there are often as colorful as the reefs themselves. Turn the page to meet some marine animals of the coral reefs. Animals of the coral reef. The octopus uses its eight tentacles to grab food. The scorpion fish looks just like a piece of coral. It has poisonous quills on its fin. The Portuguese man of war jellyfish has tentacles up to 165 feet long. When in danger, puffer fish swell up to twice their normal size. Sea and enemies resemble flowers, and they are predators with stinging tentacles. A seahorse is actually a fish. Chapter 2. Dolphins 
Marine zoologists are scientists who study dolphins and other sea creatures. When zoologists x-ray a dolphin's front flippers, they see bones that look like hands. When they x-ray a dolphin's tail, they see bones that look a little bit like legs. Because of these findings, most scientists think 50 million years ago, dolphins had hands and legs and, and lived on land. Over millions of years, dolphins adapted to life in the water. Their legs turned into strong tails. Their hands turned into flippers. Their bodies became slick for quick and graceful swimming. They developed ways to breathe in the water and to find food and communicate. Today, there are 33 different, kind, spe different kinds or species of dolphins. These different species have many things in common. Cetacea. All dolphins belong to a group of animals called cetacea. Scientists think the marine animals in this group lived on land before they began life in the ocean. Whales are cetacea too. In fact, dolphins are just a small type of whale with teeth. Mammals. All dolphins are mammals. Mammals have several important things in common. All mammals are warm-blooded. This means their body temperature stays about the same no matter what the outside temperature is. All mammals have lungs and breathe air. Instead of laying eggs, mammals usually give birth to live babies. All mammal babies drink their mother's milk, and all mammals have hair. Mammals, warm-blooded, have lungs, breathe air, have live babies, drink milk, have hair. Swimming. Dolphins are strong swimmers. Most ocean dolphins can swim at speeds of 15 miles per hour. Some have been recorded going as fast as 30 miles an hour. Dolphins move fastest when they leap out of water and plunge back into a shallow dive. By making a shallow dive, they spend very little time actually underwater. This shallow diving is called porpoising. When they want to dive deeply, some dolphins can go over 1,000 feet deep. When they jump out of the water, they can leap as high as 16 feet in the air. They get their power from strong tail flukes which move up and down. Their tails push them through the water quickly like a motor on a boat. Dolphins use their front flippers to steer. Some have an upper or dorsal fin on their backs that help them keep them upright. Breathing. Most marine animals get the air they need while swimming in the water, but dolphins have to go to the surface to breathe. Dolphins breathe through a hole on the top of their heads called a blowhole. The blowhole acts like a nose. Just before they reach the surface, they all blow the air from the blowhole. When they reach the surface, they inhale air through the blowhole in less than a second. A flap quickly closes the blowhole, trapping the air, and the dolphins dive back into the water. Dolphin skin. Dolphins have smooth skin that feels like rubber. Because their skin is slippery, water flows easily around it. To keep their skin smooth, dolphins shed it constantly. Dolphins have a special layer of fat under their skin called blubber. Dolphins and porpoises. People sometimes confuse dolphins and porpoises. Here are their difference. Most dolphins have sharper noses called rostrums. Dolphins have sharp teeth. Porpoises have round noses. Porpoises have teeth that are flat on top. Porpoises are usually less than 7 feet long. Dorphin, dolphins can be over 30 feet long. And at the top of this page, blubber acts like a winter coat and keeps dolphins warm in cold water. Dolphins that live in cold water often have a thicker layer of blubber than those that live in warmer waters. Blubber is also light and help, helps keep dolphins from sinking while they swim, a little bit like an inner tube. Echolocation. Dolphins find food and communicate with other dolphins by echolocation. This word is made up of two words, echo and location. Dolphins use echoes to locate fish and other sea creatures they like to eat. When dolphins want to find food, they make clicking or whistling noises. These noises travel through the water and bounce off objects like fish or squid. Sound waves are sent through the nasal sacs behind the melon into the water. Just like an echo, the sound bounces back into the dolphin and vibrates against its inner ear. The dolphin's brain then uses these vibrations to tell the size, direction, speed, and distance of whatever objects are in the water. Dolphins, cetacea. Mammals, strong swimmers, breathe through blowholes, smooth skin, echolocation. Turn the page to learn about different kinds of dolphins. Killer whale, length up to 32 feet, weight 8,000 to 12,000 pounds. Killer whales are actually dolphins. Although they are not harmful to people, they are one of the most feared animals in the ocean. Killer whales eat seals, porpoises, birds, whales, or eat and even other dolphins. They can swallow 50 pounds of food in one gulp. They can eat up to 400 pounds of food in a day. They hunt in packs of up to 40 and can swim more than 30 miles per hour. The Amazon River Dolphin, length 6 feet 10, 6 to 10 feet, weight up to 350 pounds. The Amazon River Dolphin is also called the Bodo Dolphin. These dolphins are unusual because they live in fresh water. They are also unusual because some of them are pink. 
Others are blue-gray. Every year during the rainy season, the Amazon River floods. Sometimes more than 30 feet of water covers the trees around the river. River dolphins can actually swim through the trees. Bottlenose dolphin. Length up to 12 feet. Weight up to 1,000 pounds. Bottlenose dolphins look as if they're smiling. They are named bottlenose because their nose are shaped like bottles. Some scientists think bottlenoses are the most intelligent dolphins. Because they learn to do tricks easily, sea parks often train them to leap through hoops or play with balls. Bottlenoses seem curious about humans and will swim near people in the water. At certain beaches, people can actually swim with trained bottlenose dolphins. Spinner dolphin. Length, 5 feet 8. Weight, up to 200 pounds. Swimmer dolphins are very acrobatic. They get their name because they jump out of the water and they can spin around as many as 16 times on their tails before diving back into the water again. Besides spinning, they can also do somersaults and other exciting leaps in the air. Spinners sometimes travel in groups of up to 1,000 dolphins. People often watch spinners off the coast of Hawaii as they perform their amazing spins and leaps. Chapter 3, Dolphin Life. Dolphins live together in groups. These groups are called pods or herds. A pod has up to 40 dolphins. A herd can have up to several hundred. Beginning at birth, each dolphin depends on other dolphins for the group of survival. Baby dolphins. When a dolphin is born, its mother and other dolphins don't, they, they take care of it. A baby dolphin is called a calf. It is born underwater and usually comes out tail first. It can't swim at first, so its mother pushes it to the surface to breathe. Sometimes another dolphin, called an auntie, helps the mother do this. Baby dolphins are around 3 feet long and weigh 20 to 50 pounds when they're born. Calves stay close to their mothers. When calves are hungry, they drink milk from their mother's body. This is called nursing. A dolphin baby needs to nurse 3 to 8 times an hour. It nurses for over a year. In just a few weeks, the calf will double its size. When the baby needs protection, the mother holds it close with her flippers. When the mother is always, uh, when the mother is away hunting, the calf is often often watched by an auntie dolphin or other adults in the group. The calf stays with its mother for as long as six years. During this time, it learns about life in the ocean. Communication. Dolphins use echolocation to communicate with each other. Each dolphin has its own special way of clicking and whistling. Baby dolphins first learn to imitate their mother's whistles. Later, they develop a special whistle of their own. Dolphins learn to recognize each other by these sounds. When dolphins are together, the ocean is filled with the noise of their clicks and whistles. Dolphins also communicate by touch. When the mother and baby swim together, they often brush against each other to make sure that each other's close by. If the calf doesn't behave, the mother will push it to the bottom and hold it there a little while. Sometimes the mother even butts the baby's head to show it who's boss. Dolphin play. Dolphins spend a lot of time playing together. They even seem to have best friends. They chase each other. They make circles in the water with bubbles and try to swim through them. They leap out of the water and fall back in. They slap their tails in the water to get attention. Since dolphins like the waves boats make, sometimes they swim alongside boats. Baby dolphins are especially playful. When they play, they throw seaweed at each other. They balance rocks on their flippers. All this play helps them practice skills that they later use for swimming and hunting. Hunting. Dolphins hunt together for fish and squid. By acting as a team, they catch a lot more food than they would alone. Using echolocation, they communicate with each other about where the fish are. Because fish are easier to catch when they are close together, the dolphins swim in a circle around them. The fish move together in a big cluster. Then the dolphins move in for a feast. Sometimes dolphins spread out in wide groups to catch as many fish as possible. They herd the fish into shallow, shallow waters onto beaches and rocks where they can't escape. Using their strong flippers, dolphins can pull up to shore on their stomachs and eat as many fish as they want. Dolphins to the rescue. Dolphins protect each other. When a dolphin is in danger, it sends out a distress call. Other dolphins come to the rescue. Sometimes a weak dolphin can't get to the surface. Other dolphins help push it to the surface to breathe. When a shark or killer whale threatens the group, a stronger dolphins make a protective circle around the weaker ones. Then they drive the predator away by butting it with their hard noses. Dolphins are wonderful creatures. They live and work together. They play together and take care of each other. They do many things that people do. But the reason dolphins are amazing is not because they act like people. They're amazing because they act just like themselves. Turn the page to learn about dolphins and people. Dolphins and people. For thousands of years, people have been interested in dolphins. The ancient Greeks believed dolphins were messengers from the gods. They thought killing a dolphin was as bad as killing a human being. This painting from Greece is more than 3,400 years old. Many people long ago believed dolphins had special powers. Some thought dolphins could turn themselves into people. 
Today, everyone knows that dolphins can't turn themselves into people, but scientists are learning more every day about what dolphins can do. A dolphin can learn simple commands like get ball. Sometimes the dolphin won't give it back. Dolphins also often imitate some things people do. Researchers have watched dolphins lift their tail when a person lifts his arms. Chapter 4, Sharks. Although dolphins and shark and sharks share the same ocean, ocean home, they are very different. Sharks have been around much longer than dolphins. They came from the first fish, which lived over 500 million years ago. These fish had no jaws or teeth. Over the years, their bodies changed to look like the sharks we know today. There are more than 350 different species of shark. sharks. Sharks are cold-blooded. That means their body temperature changes with the outside temperature. Most live in warmer oceans, but some live in rivers, lakes, and even cold Arctic seas. Some sharks lay eggs, others give birth to live young. Some, like the pygmy shark, are small enough to fit in your hand. Others, like the basking and whale sharks, are among the largest animals in the ocean and can be more than 50 feet long. All sharks, however, have important things in common. Cartilage. Sharks are not mammals. They are a special kind of fish. They belong to a group of marine animals called chondrithides. Sharks don't have a skeleton made out of bone like most fish. Instead, they have all strong rubber-like skeletons made out of cartilage. Cartilage feels like bone, but it's not as hard. Because cartilage is more flexible, sharks can turn quickly in the water. Cartilage is also lighter than bone, which makes it easier for sharks to swim. Teeth. Sharks have l a lot of teeth. Many have five rows of teeth at a time. It's a good thing they have so many teeth if they weren't always losing them. Adult sharks go through thousands of teeth in their lifetime. When one falls out, a back tooth moves forward to replace it. Sharks' teeth come in all sizes and shapes. Some are jagged and shaped like triangles. Others are narrow and sharp. Scientists can often tell what a species of a, a shark is by its teeth. Shark skin. Sharks have very rough skin that protects them from injury. It's covered in tiny ridges that are actually tiny teeth. A shark's skin can cause wounds if it brushes against a human or another fish. Swimming. Sharks are powerful swimmers. They usually swim about one and a half to three miles an hour, but they can swim very fast if they need to. Most sharks swim by moving their tails or caudal fins from side to side. Sharks have two fins on their backs that are called dorsal fins. These two fins keep sharks from tipping from side to side. Sharks also have side fins called pectoral fins that lift them up as they swim. Breathing. Sharks don't have lungs. Instead, they have five to seven pairs of gills on either side of their heads. Gills are little openings that filter the oxygen out of the water into the shark's body. Then the oxygen goes into the shark's bloodstream. That allows sharks to breathe underwater without having to go to the surface. Some sharks swim with their mouths open. This pushes the water back toward the gills. Scientists used to think that most sharks needed to keep moving through the water to get oxygen to breathe. But more than 30 years ago, a discovery changed their minds. Turn the page and learn what they found. Cave of the Sleeping Sharks In 1969, a fisherman swimming off the coast of Mexico came upon an amazing sight, an underwater cave of tiger sharks that were not moving. The sharks seemed to be resting, but their eyes were open. Tiger sharks can be dangerous, but the fisherman was able to get close enough to pet them. Scientists have found the cave had fresh water mixed in with salt water. Fresh water has more oxygen in it than salt water. They think that the extra oxygen helped the sharks breathe without swimming and perhaps made them calm. Chapter 5. Sharks as Predators Sharks are built to hunt. They move silently through the water, searching for prey. Sharks feast on seals, sea lions, squid, sea turtles, octopuses, and other sharks, dolphins, shellfish, and seabirds, and lots of fish. When they are ready for a meal, sharks rely on a special group of senses to find food. Hearing. Sharks have a very keen sense of hearing and can pick up sounds people cannot hear. They can hear prey moving over a half a mile away. Much of their food comes from the fish that are weak and not swimming well. When the sharks hear these fish splashing or swimming unevenly, une they swim toward the sound. Lateral line. Another sense sharks have is called lateral line. This is a line of nerves that run alongside the shark's body to its head. These nerves help sharks feel vibrations or movements. Sharks can feel vibrations from their prey 3 to 10 feet away. Sometimes the water is hard to see, though. The lateral line helps sharks find their food in murky waters. It's feeding time for this tiger shark. Smell. 
Sharks have an excellent sense of smell. In fact, this may be their strongest sense. Once they catch a whiff of something interesting, they'll follow the scent until they find its source. Since sharks often prey on weak and wounded fish, they are attracted to the scent of blood. Sharks can sometimes smell a drop of blood from over 1,000 feet away. By eating weak or dying fish, sharks help keep the ocean clean. Vision Sharks have great eyesight. They can see an object more than 50 feet away in clear water. Their eyes are on either side of their heads. This gives the shark a wide view. Sharks can see well at night as in the day. Sharks that live in deep waters usually have larger eyes than sharks that live near the surface. Larger eyes help them to see objects in the dark. When some sharks zero in for an attack, they close their eyes and roll them back to protect themselves from being hit in the eye by bones or sharp objects. Since they can't see, they must use a special sense around the nose to actually hit their target. This sense picks up tiny electrical currents that come from the movements of their prey. Even their eyes closed, sharks can see. When sharks are ready to attack, their jaws unhinge and move forward. The teeth lock into place and give them a better grip on their food. Then they begin to feed. Sharks. Predators, good hearing, lateral line, great smellers, sharp eyesight. Turn the page to see what sharks eat. Sharks eat the strangest things. Most sharks are actually picky eaters. When they eat something other than marine animals, it's because they've made a mistake. Scientists think the mistake occurs when sharks close their eyes before an attack. A plastic bag, shoe, aluminum can, anchor, clothes, soft drink bottle, coal, license plate. Some amazing things have been found in their stomachs. Chapter 6, Shark Attack! Books and movies often tell mo stories about sharks attacking people. Sometimes people are even afraid to swim in the ocean. How afraid should they be? How often do sharks actually attack people? The truth is, not very often. All over the world, millions of people swim in the ocean every day, and yet sharks attack very few people. You are more likely to be hit on the head by a coconut or step on an elephant than to be attacked by a shark. When sharks attack people, it is usually because they're confused. In fact, sharks are actually shy creatures. Scientists think they mistake humans for sea lions or other marine animals that make up their diet. Sometimes shark, sharks attack swimmers or surfers. This is because they're attracted to the splashing they hear or the movement they see, not to the people. These sharks have come close to shore looking for food. They think people in the water are struggling fish. Spear fishermen have oft, often been attacked by sharks. Sharks are attracted to blood from the speared fish. Most fishermen take extra precautions. They carry a special sealed bag to put fish in so sharks won't swim their way in search of a meal. Scuba divers swim so smoothly they often swim in the midst of sharks without any fear at all. Shark Protection Swimmers can protect themselves from shark attacks. There are many sharks off the beaches of Australia and South Africa. When shark attacks become a problem, nets were put up to protect the swimmers. Since then, there have been no further shark attacks. Some divers have experimented with diving suits made of metal to protect themselves from sharks. These might protect against sh smaller sharks, but they do not work well against large ones. Larger sharks can bite right through the metal. Diver and metal suit. Here are some ways you can protect yourself when you're swimming with or without sharks. Safe swimming. Swim in groups. Avoid swimming at dusk or during the night. Many sharks are most active at night. Stay away from sandbars. Shark, some, sharks sometimes lurk around sandbars looking for fish. If you see a fin moving back and forth, get out of the water. When you're racing to get out, don't splash. Turn the page to meet some dangerous sharks. The great white shark, length up to 21 feet, weight up to 7,000 pounds. Meet the most feared shark in the ocean. This is the shark in the movie Jaws. The great white is huge, but that's not all, all that's great about the great white. It can have 3,000 teeth. Great whites rarely attack humans, but they do eat fish, sea lions, seals, otters, and sea turtles. Sometimes after a big meal, they don't eat for another two months. Tiger shark. Length, 10 to 20 feet. Weight, over 2,000 pounds. Tiger sharks get their name because they have stripes down their back. However, they are dark gray, not tan like tigers. These big sharks are sometimes called the garbage cans of the ocean because, they eat, because of all the garbage they eat. It seems sometimes they'll just eat just about anything, but when they eat too much garbage, they throw up. Great hammerhead shark, length up to 20 feet, weight up to 1,000 pounds. Great hammerhead sharks get their names because of the heads that are shaped like hammers. As they swim, they swing their head from side to side looking for prey. They might look odd, but having their eyes so far apart helps them see very well. Their heads also, also help them turn quickly while swimming, like the rudder of a boat. Great hammerheads sometimes attack humans, but stingrays are their favorite food. 
bull shark. Length up to 11 feet. Weight up to 500 pounds. Bull sharks face Faces look a little bit like those of bulls. Their snouts are wider than they are long, and their bodies look almost as chubby. Bull sharks don't swim as fast as other sharks, but they can breathe while they rest. They are different from most sharks because they live in both fresh and salt water. They live in the Ganges, Amazon, and Zambezi rivers, and Lake Nicaragua. They are even been found 100 miles up the Mississippi River. Bull sharks are aggressive and attack people more often than any other sharks. Some scientists call them the most dangerous shark in the world. A mako shark, 5 to 12 feet, up to 1,000 pounds. Because of their sleek bodies, scientists call makos the perfect sharks. Their bodies are deep blue and silver and built for speed and grace. Unlike other sharks, the mako can jump out of high out of water. Makos swim at the surface of the water in as deep as 1,200 feet. Some scientists think they are the fastest sharks around. They can travel up to 60 miles an hour in short distances. Chapter 7 Saving Dolphins and Sharks Dolphins and sharks have been swimming in the ocean for millions of years, but today they face great dangers. Every year, over 3,000 dolphins die when they are trapped in huge fishing nets. Some dolphins are hurt when they try to get out of the nets. Others are killed to prevent them from eating fish that the fishermen want to catch. Thousands of other dolphins are killed for food or sport. Every year, 30 to 1 million sharks are killed by nets or for food or for sport. Many are killed for their fins alone. Shark fin soup is popular in some Asian countries. Like dolphins, others die when fishermen shoot them as they try to eat fish near the fishing boats. Ocean problems. The ocean habitat of dolphins and sharks is also in danger. Scientists think that noise from boats may interfere with echolocation. They worry that pollution, garbage, climate changes, and too much fishing are affecting life in the ocean. When bad things happen in the ocean, all marine am animals are in danger. Research. Scientists are researching dolphins and sharks in order pr to protect them. They use photographs to track dolphins' movements in the water. They track sharks by interesting special tags in their skin. By counting the number of sharks and dolphins living in the ocean and by learning about their ocean habitat, scientists learn how changes in the ocean affect dolphins and sharks. These scientists are measuring and tagging a lemon shark. Conservation. Scientists and volunteers are also joining together to protect dolphins and sharks. This is called conservation. Conservation means to keep things from harm. Conservation groups are trying to get laws passed to stop too much fishing with huge nets. They are trying to stop pollution of oceans by chemicals and garbage. Conservationists know that a healthy ocean is necessary for all marine animals. What can you do? You can help by not leaving garbage at the beach. You can ask your parents to buy tuna fish that is labeled dolphin safe. You can recycle and not be wasteful. You and your family, family can support groups that help marine animals. Your class can write letters asking lawmakers to pass laws that protect ocean and its creatures. With your help, sharks and dolphins can live long lives in their wondrous ocean home. The more you learn about nature, the better it is for you and all the sharks and dolphins in the world.